Hello everyone, my name is Pixorius and welcome back to Decidedly Vanilla. How are you guys doing? Hope you're all having a good day today. Today we are going to embark on something very, very different for me. I am going to be making myself a birch factory. Yes, you heard it right. Do not adjust your sets. This is still the real Pixorifs. But yes, I need a, a decent supply of birch. And I've been building with birch stripped logs so much in the season that I decided it was probably a good time to start making a factory. So we're going to make a kind of feed tape tree farm today. We're going to have the trees just kind of separated out from all of the leaves and whatnot that grow and we're going to move all of the logs over to a completely separate area where we can harvest them strip them down or whatever we need to do because bj was telling me the other day that there is actually a recipe to strip logs i don't have any logs to hand so i can't really demonstrate it but there's a a recipe in one of our data packs that is supposed to be able to strip logs just in a crafting interface in like a diamond shape in a two by two or three by three uh, crafting table and I don't think it works. I've tried it and it doesn't seem to work. So maybe that's something we can end up implementing on the server at some point. But in the meantime, I do need a decent supply of birch and we'll just have to strip it manually, which is why I'm down here starting today's episode at the Skeleton Spawner repairing my axe. And I will probably end up repairing some of my other tools as well because my Silk Touch shovel is in need of it, as is my Silk Touch pickaxe. And I think I put a fair amount onto the Fortune pickaxe there as well. So I'm going to mend all my tools before we get started on this because it's going to be quite the undertaking. And I think I should have enough redstone to do all the things we need to do. But if not, we're going to have to go mining. So I will spend a little bit more time here at the Skeleton Spawner gathering a little bit more experience and healing up these wonderful tools I've acquired. And then we will get started with what is going to be a pretty epic project. Okay, it's official. I am now a redstone genius. This came together super, super well. And I will explain to you guys and demonstrate how this whole thing works. This is my my birch farm and it's not really a farm. Like I should really stop calling it a farm to be honest. Here I am immediately degrading my own genius. This this is more of a tree pusher. So the idea is that anytime you farm a sapling here, it will get pushed along here and then it will just keep it'll keep going until it reaches this. This redstone torch here activates the circuit which pushes it that way and then each time it runs over one of these observers the pistons push it outwards and eventually it kind of wraps around and you end up with a a whole block of birch that you can farm so this isn't just exclusive to birch either it will actually uh, work with oak saplings as well i think any saplings other than dark oak would probably work pretty well but yeah i will demonstrate how this works but first of all a lesson about how temperamental birch saplings are because this is <laughs> this is kind of the reason I've created the farm the way I have. Now, your average birch sapling, if you grow it, it only takes a few bone meal, right? It just grows into one of these lovely things and you can grow a sapling immediately below all of the leaves and stuff because it doesn't take the leaves into account when it's trying to grow a sapling. Now, if I bone meal the grass here to create some grass and that's also created some two block tall grass, if I try and plant a sapling next to this two block tall grass and bone meal it, I will run through my entire stack of bone meal and the tree will still not grow. Birch does not like having other stuff grown around it. And in fact, neither do most tree saplings. So of course, our first mission is to eliminate that as a factor. And thankfully, redstone components are not counted in the, the list of things, the litany of things that birch saplings do not like to be grown next to. Now, obviously, you can farm birch saplings in a row like that. So it stands to reason that actual birch logs are another thing that you can grow birch saplings next to, which is why at the beginning of our little feeding tape here, we have ourselves for birch logs and that <laughs> that is basically the only way i could figure out to get the birch to grow like you couldn't put pistons next to the birch as it was growing here because uh it would actually it, it would it would stop the birch from growing if you had pistons next to it so instead we have a a, a set of sticky pistons pushing these birch logs and these logs will always stay attached to these pistons so what happens is this thing here has a uh, this thing this redstone torch contri contrivance here has a, uh, a signal always going into this block and right now it's not transmitting a signal through it because the birch sapling is not solid it cannot do that but once you grow it into a tree it 
has a solid block there, and birch trunks can actually transmit a redstone signal through them. It goes through this to a monostable circuit, which is just a piston underneath a, uh, a block here, and that transmits a single pulse through here into this redstone repeater, which then activates the pistons, pushing everything over to one side. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not using an observer to create a one tick pulse. Observers are just too fast. They actually end up creating a clock because if you have a, an observer there, it detects that the piston uh, kind of pushes these blocks in front of it. And excuse me, do you mind? The, the mushrooms were the worst part about building this whole thing. The mushrooms were just all over the place because I had to remove the, uh, the mushroom farm I had here beforehand. I might end up just kind of enclosing them somewhere else. But yeah, like I was saying, the observers are just too fast. They will detect a piston moving something in front of this circuit and they will just create a clock and it will just be constantly going and going and going. And the, the, the there had to be a couple of maneuvers to get around that. We needed to make a pulse extender for this so that it wouldn't just uh, just completely clock out whenever I, uh, I, I ended up pushing a birch log into this location above any of these observers. So what you end up with is a system that you can just hold saplings and bone meal in your hands like so. In fact, I think if we put saplings in the offhand and bone meal in the main hand, I can actually demonstrate how this works. And the best thing about birch saplings is that they don't grow leaves in your personal hitbox. Like oak, oak trees will actually, you kind of have to get down in a block like that and grow them from there because they will generate uh, leaves at head height for the player. So you'll end up not being able to bone meal the saplings here because you're looking at a leaf block instead of the ground. But uh, yeah, all you need to do is stand here and keep doing this. And eventually, it does take a little bit of time with some of the saplings. Sometimes you end up going through a bit of bone meal, but it really does start to generate them after a while. And it'll do this with oak wood as well as a birch wood, and I'm, I've not tried any of the other wood types yet, but I'm imagining they all work in kind of the same way. So obviously I'm going to need a great deal of bone meal for this to, uh, to, to be pulled off, and right now I don't have a huge amount of bone meal because I've run my skeleton farm dry and I've been using bone blocks to uh, decorate the tunnel to the squid farm, so either I'll have to reclaim all those bone blocks and use a different material, or I'll, I'll, I'll just end up AFKing for a ton more bones. But basically, anytime it reaches one of these pistons, it gets pushed over like that. Likewise, these guys as well, and you end up with a huge block here. So I reckon what I'm going to do is gather enough bones to basically turn this entire area into a huge block of birch and then we're going to strip that down and then I will have as much stripped birch as I will need for the foreseeable future. So we're going to do that in the form of a time lapse just because I want to see how pretty this thing looks from the air when it is doing its thing and you guys can enjoy that as well and then we'll get on with what we're going to do for the rest of today's episode. And that, my friends, is how you get it done. I do need to install another obsidian column on this side because otherwise this like line of, of stuff is just going to end up out here somewhere. Although it's probably still only going to be limited by the amount this set of pistons can push. So I reckon 13 blocks is probably about there. 
anyway. That tape starts a little bit further over on that side, and I feel bad that I ended up smushing a mushroom in the process of that, but they're everywhere on this island. I, I had to let them out, and they're just kind of roaming around my contraptions at this point. There is even one over here in Pixel Co. that we named on a live stream, thanks to my buddy Joel, who uh, we <laughs> he's he's got this thing with bats now where he name tags a bat every time it shows up, and so we we have uh, we have finally got a mascot. By the way, look at the amount of uh, <laughs> the amount of stripped birch I have in my inventory now. That's all from that one farming session. Not bad. And in real time, that took about I don't know, like ten minutes. If that, it really wasn't long. Anyway, this is Door Cow. <laughs> Door Cow seems to have wandered in here, uh, gone up the stairs next to the pumpkin farm and then just dropped down onto these pistons and now it can't pathfind away because if it goes in any direction it's going to take full damage so we have a mascot for pixel go now this is door cow and if only we could get it to stand just like in that pose permanently looking majestic on the top of the door it could be like having a statue next to your entrance but there we go folks that is a a working demonstration of this birch farm and I guess we're probably going to build another layer on top that can be the oak farm, or maybe we'll just use this layer for both. But I do want to build a structure around this thing. I don't want to have this unsightly redstone contraption next to one of my favorite builds that I've done so far. So we are going to have to build something around this. And I kind of want to make an alleyway sort of thing between these two. But obviously the landscape here dictates that this is kind of up the hill from this one. So I'm not quite sure how this section is going to work out. We will see. But I reckon... Maybe we could even make like a little basement level of something like this. I reckon we could probably have like a, a basement sticking out of there. So maybe it could work. I don't know. We're going to have a go at that. I might draft a couple of things in creative first though, because my brain is not immediately filled with inspiration on seeing this. So maybe we'll end up figuring out something there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and draft a few things, see what I can come up with. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do a little bit of building in today's episode. You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss Still a kid I don't know about you guys, but I can be happy with that. That's 
That's looking real good, as far as I'm concerned. The roof is still a little bit odd. I, I'm still, I'm still just not a fan of doing roofs. Like, generally, not a fan of doing roofs. I think the roof of this kind of came out a little bit of a compromise. I feel like the roof of this looks okay from up here. I've left a, a hole in the middle here because I kind of want to add in a special block here, like a kind of capstone block of some kind. I'm thinking maybe gold ore, or not gold ore, but gold, a gold block might work well with all of the prismarine and everything. It'll look pretty decadent, but I don't know if I have one in here. Do I have anything? Oh, I've got 17 gold ingots, so yeah, maybe we can turn one of those into a block and cap it off with that. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a, a weird shaped roof. Like if, if it was a dome, then the dome would kind of flatten out towards the middle and instead it's just got this like extra lump in the center here, <laughs> which I can hop up and place this gold block and we'll uh, we'll call the build done. I'm not really willing to give any more time to this one. It's taken a while to begin with. That time lapse was probably about three hours worth of work constantly. Uh, and it's taken every last bit of Dark Prismarine that I have, basically. I've got all but the last of this stack and some stairs left. And I, I was even adding more sandstone to this central section of the roof here, which I did off camera, by the way, because I just couldn't not use my camera account to look at all of the sections of the roof to make sure I was copying it correctly every time <laughs> because the roof is a little bit more complicated than that and just showing you guys a section of the roof I'd already done wouldn't make for a very good time lapse but here we go uh we have we have very little dark prismarine left uh thankfully Awuga and I have worked out a deal which we will uh, show you guys, I'll show you in the next episode because uh, <laughs> I think I'm running out of time for this particular episode. But yeah, really happy with how this all came together, especially when you view it from inside because right now I haven't done any of the floors or anything. We're going to have the birch manufacturing floor here, probably going to have some sort of basement as well. I still haven't worked out the basement. There's a, a massive wall of sandstone running around this that's maybe sort of five blocks deep in places that we're going to work out like a, a lower level to. But then the next level is going to be the oak manufacturing section and that is not a bad looking roof. I think right now it suffers a little bit from the fact that I've put a block up there and so it doesn't have any kind of uh, lighting in it. But yeah, maybe you should put some torches or some sea lanterns or something up there just so you can so you can see it properly. But I like the design of that roof. I'm I'm pretty happy with how it came together. And I think with that, we're going to wrap up this episode because I've done a lot already and I want to get this one out to you guys. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Decidedly Vanilla. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you guys soon. And don't forget to check out the latest episode of my podcast. A link will be in the description. Take it easy, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.